Hello friends, this video on biomolecules part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this, uh, we end our discussion on uh, each type of amino acid. If you want, you can refer all the 20 amino acids uh, in your chemistry videos. So here now we are going to talk about the amino acid linkage. I told you that, uh, that now by this time we uh, have fair knowledge about the amino acids. Now these amino acids are going to get linked to form proteins. So what is the type of linkage that develops between the amino acids? So proteins are the polymers of alpha amino acids and they are connected to each other by a peptide bond or a peptide linkage. Now as I mentioned in case of carbohydrate you had the glycosidic bond, a similar type of bond here just that it happens between two amino acids but the process still remains the same. So you have one amino acid, this is one amino acid, this is another amino acid. So can you tell me which amino acid is this? So here you have one amine group, one carboxyl group and one alkyl group and the alkyl group is methyl. So this is your alanine. Which amino acid is this? You have one amine group, one carboxyl group and the alkyl group is H. That is the smallest amino acid, glycine. So when two amino acids join together, and if you take out one molecule of water, that is the process of dehydration synthesis. So what happens? A new bond is formed. So here from this, if you take out OH and from this, you take out one H. So this OH will move out and from here one H will move out. So what will remain? CO will remain from this side and from this side NH will remain. So a bond will be formed between CA and NH and this bond is known as a peptide bond. So the bond between CO and NH is called peptide bond and this entire structure which is formed is a protein. So a protein is formed by the process of dehydration synthesis where water is pulled out to form a bond and the bond which is formed is called a peptide bond or a peptide linkage. Clear? Okay, so now just imagine all the complex, the structures of proteins are really complex and all those complex structures are formed by this simple process. So peptide linkage is an amide formed between COOH group and NH2 group. So this is basically the amide. Now let us look at the types of peptides. Now there are many types of peptides that can be formed like dipeptide. What is dipeptide? Dipeptide means two amino acids joined together by one peptide bond. So two amino acids joined together by one peptide bond. So when you talk about tripeptide, it is three amino acid joined together by two peptide bond. You talk about tetrapeptide, that is four amino acid joined together by three peptide bond. So basically they are called di, tri and tetra based on the number of amino acids which are joined together. So let us look at some of the examples. So here you have one amino acid, here you have another amino acid. So you have one peptide bond here, if you see, you have one peptide bond. So this is an example of a dipeptide because two amino acids are joined together by a peptide bond. Similarly, if you look at this example, how many peptide bonds you have? So you have one peptide bond here, you have another peptide bond here. So two peptide bonds are present. I'm sorry, there's just one peptide bond. This is the only one. This is not a peptide bond. So just one peptide bond joining the two amino acids. This is an example of a dipeptide. Similarly, if you look at this picture, you see there, there is one amino, uh, one peptide bond here. Again, there is another peptide bond here. So there are multiple peptide bonds. So depending upon the number of amino acids which are joined together, they are called di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, or polypeptides. So proteins, most of the proteins which we are going to talk about, they are polypeptides. That is, 
Several amino acids are joined together by several peptide bonds. So now let us talk about the proteins. So we will talk about the different types of proteins. So broadly there we are going to talk about two types of proteins that is fibrous protein and globular protein. So we will discuss about these two types of proteins in detail. However, there is another type of protein called membrane protein but we are not going to discuss that right here. So membrane protein are mostly those which are used in the construction or in, the, in building the structure of membranes. So we will put more concentration on fibrous and globular protein. So let's see what are they. So let us now talk about fibrous and globular protein. So fibrous protein, the name itself fibrous has come from fibers. That is because the proteins look like long fibers or ropes. So due to that appearance, they are known as fibrous protein. So when polypeptide chains run parallel and are held together by hydrogen and disulfide bonds, then fiber or rod or wire like structure is formed and these are known as fibrous protein. So this is how a rope would look like. So here also you can see these are polypeptide chains. So these chains, multiple chains will run parallelly as you can see here and they are linked together by hydrogen bond. So these dotted structures which you see they represent hydrogen bonds. They are comparatively weak bonds but they are good enough to hold two polypeptide chains together and that is how you get this kind of fibrous proteins. So these are generally water insoluble and found mostly in animals. In fact, in animals also, you can see them in uh, connective tissues like collagen fibers. So in connective tissues in animals like the collagen fibers. So the collagen fibers are actually made up of fibrous proteins. So that is your fibrous protein. The next type is globular protein. Globular, the word globular is derived from globe. So these proteins resemble the shape of a globe, so some, some sort of spherical shape rather. So that is why they are called globular proteins. So what happens here, this structure results when chains of polypeptides coil around to give a spherical shape. In case of fibrous protein, we had linear chains of polypeptides which are joined together by hydrogen bonds. That was the case in case of fibrous protein. In this protein, the chains of polypeptides will coil around in this fashion to form a spherical structure. So that is why it will get the structure of a shape uh, of a uh, globe and that is why they are called globular protein. So you can see here in, the, in this figure it almost get a rough spherical shape. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again. So now we will talk about, okay, now 